hat. And Mother O'Reilly. Pardon? Anyway. We forgot about the false tabs. Anyway, Carl Wayne. Wasn't that great? Flowers in the rain. All that psychedelia. Now, later we'll be going over to BH, the fun factory, for a live look at Radio 1 today. As you can see, every expense has been spared to make this a night to remember. And I'll also be talking to Pete Murray, David Simons, Ed Stewart and Dave Cash. They were all there in week one. In fact, they're there in this team photograph. Look at that. Gosh. Look at that. That's me. Second from the left there. And the middle row. Look here. It's like the first, first Holy Communion photograph. All right. But only one of that group is still on Radio 1 today. Along with Tony Blackburn, he's my first guest. So welcome, John Peel and Tony Blackburn. <laughs> they sound good. Huh? They Don't sound they? Good yeah. all the time. Yeah. Terrific, Wonderful. yeah. Foot tapping stuff. Oh, Too remember. little of that around now. You remember the beginning of Radio One, of course. I you were do. there at the very beginning. You were the first. Yep, absolutely. That's something so, I'm very proud of as well. Yeah. No matter what they might say. No, it's very, what, very proud of it. It's what indeed. you say that worries. <laughs> well, no, no, very proud of it. What was it like in the early days? I mean, it was the BBC. You, mm. most of you, I was the only one who came from any kind of honest, upright station. The rest <laughs> of you came from a boat. <laughs> Came from a boat or a yeah. fort somewhere. That's I right. mean, and this, of course, ran into the, the BBC's idea of how things should be done a mm. little bit, didn't it? I mean, were they, were they, did they decide to let it all hang out when they brought these jocks from the, the boats to Radio 1A? Eh? What? Well, they were very good. They got Kenny, Kenny Everett and myself in to uh, help them design the studios and things like that. And then um, I remember that a lot of the BBC people, it was the flower power era, and they were wearing all the flowery shirts and things like that. And all those of us who come from the ships, we changed into suits <laughs> and things like that. And uh, they all had long hair and we had short hair. And yeah. it, gradually it got sorted out, though. I mean, it was, it was great fun. And yeah. the station, I think, uh, when I launched it in 67, I knew that it was going to sound pretty good. I mean, we had the same jingles as the pirate radio station. So it, it was uh, quite a good sound. I and, must, let's, let's pause yeah. a mo and have a look at the very beginning, which was filmed for all posterity. Mm. I want you to have a look at this and weep. Just for fun, music, too much. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to the exciting new sound of Radio One. <laughs> I mean, I, I know it was a publicity man or a, uh, who did it, but to put Robin Scott standing there like some... A cardboard cutout, like, actually, yeah, I think of Robin like Scott. Like some spectre at the feet. Like sooty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> standing there, looking, looking tremendously like, a, like yeah. a BBC man. I remember when I... He was terrific, though, wasn't when he? When I started in the afternoon, I actually had a producer sitting with me for a long time, for about two or three years, who used to say, ten minutes for the next link. All right, you know, quick, wind up when I'd yeah. be talking too much. And you, you never had to tolerate I that. I did, actually, yeah. In fact, the first producer I had is now the controller, uh, Johnny Birling. He mm. was the first person in there. But uh, I had that as well, yeah. But Robin Scott, he was known as the White Tornado. And uh, he was terrific in the early days. And uh, it was, uh, that morning was a very special morning. That was really great, because we had all the photographers there. And uh, the whole thing went very well. I mean, I was glad... I was glad it was over because I thought, well, they were going to record that. And if I'd come on and said the, you know, welcome to the exciting new sound of Radio Caroline or something, you know, it would have been dreadful. Yeah. Uh, you, you've taken a porky view of it since, but I'll, well, talk, no, to you, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Okay, well, I wanted to right, talk to yeah. John about, really, you were the most unconventional because you were doing something oh, rather, but, rather far fetched. Oh, but the, the, the thing was that. You were garden. You that's, were, that's you were right. into. To frocks and everything. That's right. So, yes, psychedelic music. There's <laughs> oh, no question yeah. about it. Yeah. But I knew I was all right when they got. Uh, I was taken in to meet uh, somebody who'd been put in charge of Radios 1 and 2. And uh, I went in there, and he's, I was the last of the DJs to be taken in there and introduced to him. And he was obviously very nervous because he thought I was going to do something unforgivable, like rub drugs into the roots of his hair or something. You know, <laughs> he's obviously fearful of something. And uh, so we were talking. And I mentioned in the course of the discussion public schools, right? Yeah. And he sort of, oh, so 
so you, what, you, you, you knew somebody at public school? I said, no, I was at a public school myself, actually. And he said, well, so, somewhere on the, so, on the south coast, you know, somebody never... And I said, actually, uh, I was at Shrewsbury, Riggs Hall. How's old Brookie? He said, and I thought straight away I was in. From that moment on, <laughs> he said, he may not look like one of us, but he is. Yeah. And as soon as they found out I'd been to a good school, it's yeah. all right. You were in public school as well, you see. I we was, were, yeah. There were a lot of, of, yeah, you were pretending to be young working class Unconventional, but you were working class. Yeah, yeah. Right. He used to add on add on the ships. He used to have he used to have all those jostics as well going. Yes, I did. Yes. Program. Yes. Well, and that's not all, listeners. I'm afraid his program not only sounded good, but it smelt the best of the yes. lot as well. Well, they said to me when I came over from Ireland, an innocent mm. peasant just setting foot on this great land for the first time. They said, "Watch out for John Peel. He smells like the wrath of God." <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? For that? Do they ever? I... You've been the longest serving. I mean, they, look at that picture. You're the only one who's still on Radio One. Yes, and you've. I mean, if, if one was taking bets, one would have said that you were possibly one of the first to go. This is true. If you'd had to pick somebody off that picture and say, which of these brutes isn't going to last five minutes, you'd have said, I'll have that one on the end. <laughs> <No question. laughs> yeah. um, but I think the thing is that, uh, uh, obviously, the music that I play kind of updates itself anyway. And uh... How do you stay interested in it? I can, I can only say that well, I, when, when I moved, for instance, to Radio 2, I, I kind of immediately lost interest in pop music because the other middle of the road was what I was involved in. You've obviously been lucky enough to stay it, but how do you continue an enthusiasm for something that is really played by people who are much, much younger than you? Well, the thing is that if you, if you, if you appreciate, like, the theatre or cinema or poetry or painting or something like that, you're not supposed to drop off at any particular age. So, like, our generation is the first one that had its life transformed by hearing rock and roll in, in teenage years. And I always relate everything to football because I find it provides handy analogies for most things. And I'm more concerned about what Liverpool do this season than what they did last season, which was a bad season, actually. But, I mean, the, you know, the season before that, the double and everything. But I'm more interested about what they do this season. <laughs> See? And it's the same with the music. I'm more interested... I know that when I leave here, and I'm missing the archers for this, by the way, uh, but when I leave here, um, and I get to the, uh, to, to the broadcasting house, there's going to be a big stack of records there, and I'm going to go through those records and change tonight's programme and put them in, you know, because mm. I want to hear the new records. And yeah. I hope I always stay like that, because well, I hate you've, the idea You've stayed of... enthusiastic, haven't you, Oh, yes, well? yeah. I mean, I, I just love broadcasting. I love radio, and uh, it's showing off, really, isn't it? Particularly, well, I love I, I love soul music now, of course. Yeah, I mean, I always have had this love of soul no, music. No, you didn't. So. You like just like pop music, and then you moved to radio London. You decided that no, no, I'll no. concentrate on the soul music. Oh, you liar! <laughs> you liar! Okay, I'm, I, to, to get, I did the first soul program on yeah. Radio London. Do you remember? To, to, Tom, to, to, Tom, give, Tom, to give him his yeah. due, I used to, see. I used to think that Tony here was uh, was the Antichrist. I mean, I really did, you know, yeah. because he, he he represented everything that I found disagreeable about broadcasting when we first started, and Kenny. Everett and I used to get together to try and plot his downfall, yeah. whereas now I like to think that uh, Tony and I would probably work to cause Kenny Everett's downfall if we got the chance. <laughs> <laughs> That's how things have changed. Yeah, we get on very well together, and uh, I mean, I've got a great deal of respect for uh, John. In fact, in the article that uh, you haven't mentioned that I did have a slight uh, go, I didn't... Uh, in fact, have a go at the DJs in that article. That was added on. I think you've probably been misquoted in the past. Oh, many a time. And I do, regret, I do regret that article because I wasn't having a go at the other DJs and I said some very nice things about John, which never got in either. Uh, I did criticise Radio 1, uh, but I think it's a good thing to do that because from that, they're very good at taking... Except, yes, of course, but except uh, you're going to be criticised for, for doing that of because course, you're yes. no longer on Radio 1. Yeah. It, 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 what a mistake, Terry. You were about to say. No, no, no. 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 I, was, I was at one with, with whoever fired you. Who was that? Yes, you were. I can't remember. Sorry, I, I, I can't remember. It was Robin Marcus. Scott, because you used to go on the White Tornado. That's right, yeah. Now, look, I know this, this evening is going to get even more exciting now. <laughs> really? Yeah. How it's could such it, a thing possible? possible. How, How could, could it be possible? possible? No, please, please. No, come on. You've no, got something I'll, up your sleeve, have you? Look, look, yeah. hang on. Goes to autocue. Right. We've been talking about what Radio 1 was like 20 years ago. So we're going over live now by the miracle of satellite to London's West End, to Portland Place, that vineyard of the airwaves, where faceless men toiled to harvest the grapes of wreath. Now, waiting there for us... <laughs> oh, don't think that didn't take time. Waiting for us there is Mike Shop. Smith to show us what they're up to tonight. Over to Portland Place. Yes, Terry, good evening. It, it, you can see the place has changed tremendously in 20 years. I mean, one of the things since you were here is that they've now got electricity. Over here we have got the Radio 1 sponge in its natural environment. Many people queue up to win these wonderful prizes. There it is growing in, on the seabed. And there's the Radio 1 bug on its holidays on a tropical island. Nobody has seen that picture before. It's a world exclusive. And so is this. This is my card to get into the studio. So I put it through there like that and open the door. Come with me to the Fun Palace. Evening. Come with me. 
One of the things we have these days is the Radio 1 relaxation area for the DJs. We have the fruit machine out here and, of course, the Radio 1 DJ dartboard in the corner. Uh, this is one of these new pub trivia machines you may have seen. Actually, the answer is... Uh... Oh, I thought it was Wham, sorry. <laughs> Over here is uh, the Radio 1 photo memory board. Steve Wright and the geese there from a few years ago. Hi. 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 The oxygen chamber's just down there on the right. Well, it's, um, it's that time of night. Bruno's on the air at the moment, so let's go and join him. Hi, Mike. How are you? Sorry about the mess. It's all right. It's all right. I'll just fade this record out just a little bit here, if you don't mind. Oh, this, is the, uh, this is the studio which I use this first thing in the morning, and then Gary comes in at lunchtime, Bruno comes in, and John Peel finishes off, and we all sort of clear up after each other. And we've got to explain how it works. Well, yes, it, it looks complicated. It's not really that complicated. In fact, it's more complicated next door. I mean, we've got the turntable here, which is a, a far cry from the old Dan set. It's, it's quite clever in many ways, because... It doesn't only go forward. It's got Terry like, Wogan above like, it. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't only go forward, but it also goes in reverse. And the nice thing is, it'll stop where you want it to stop as well. Hopefully. So anyone really could go backwards right for the there. next twenty years. Absolutely. And we're going on to compact disc with jingles, aren't we? This week. Yeah, in fact, uh, I believe that we are the only radio station anywhere in the world now with our new jingle package on CD. Let's Shock have a, horror. Let's have, let's have a quick look at that. There they are. Excellent, huh? How Great. did we ever afford such a brilliant thing? Ah, uh, well, you see, it is always surprising. How does this work? Well, this is the CD player. There's one of two, of course. Uh, these are the, the professional ones, which uh, allow you to queue up exactly where you, um, where you need to queue. I tell you what, we'll select one of the 50 jingles on the CD. We'll go for number five. You're not going to play a jingle before they're launched. I might do, can I? Go on, go on. Go on. let's go above. for number five. This is the new Top 40 jingle, actually, because, of course, the new Top 40 starts on Sunday. Have a listen to this. The official Top 40 in stereo FM Britain's favourite radio I love those northern accents in there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, we've got Janice Long with us this evening as well, because she's about to go on the air in the next studio That's in right. just a few minutes' time. Hello. Hello, Hello. I've got caught on she, a bulldog clip. She, yeah, on the top of Terry Wogan's head. <laughs> what is, why is there a bulldog <laughs> clip on the top of Terry Wogan's head? <laughs> you are unique because you are the only Radio 1 DJ who's pregnant. Not the first to have a baby, because Annie Nightingale, of course, has got children yes. and the ranking was P, but yes, yes. So when's the baby due? It's due at the end of January, beginning of February, so can't wait. And you can, you're just going to keep working yeah. right the way through? Yeah, carry on, take a break and then come back. Well, that'll be nice. Yeah. What about Radio 1 20 years ago? Where were you? Were you listening to Radio 1 20 years ago? Um, I honestly can't remember. I don't think I was, but I do remember listening to Johnny Walker. Um, I remember him, but he was a sort of great influence and made me go out and buy records. He used to play things, um, The Poacher and uh, Steve Miller and things like that, and he inspired me to, to go out and spend my pocket money on And, of course, he's back with us now as well. Yeah, of course, Saturdays, yeah. Bruno, were you listening to Radio 1 when it started? Well, no, I wasn't. I mean, I'd be just five then at the time or thereabouts. In fact, my first taste of radio was uh, whilst Mum was running a guest house and Jimmy Young would be playing... Uh, you know, those, those, those old hits on Radio 2. Was it Radio 2 or Radio 1 and Radio 2 were linked at that time, weren't they? They sort of mixed yeah. and matched, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are, you see, we're supposed to be the teenage network. We're supposed to be feeding the teenagers of the United Kingdom. Do you think it's a job we do well? Well, all I can say is that uh, we conducted a survey uh, and found out who actually listens to the show that I do and what sort of things that they wanted to hear, what sort of music, what sort of papers they read, how they voted, all of those sort of things. And uh, consequently, we, we sort of tailor the show um, in that direction. And that's why we do a lot of features on the show. We might be discussing Nicaragua tonight. We're looking at the Labour, Labour Party conference, or we could be doing a, a report on racial harassment. And apart from um, the sort of music they want, uh, I'm scouring the country looking for new bands and playing the sort of music that they want to hear. So from my point of view, yes, I think we are. How different is a DJ today from what a DJ would have been 20 years ago, apart from the haircuts? Oh, definitely the haircuts. So <laughs> They've fact, changed. Yeah, mine hasn't been cut since the 70s. You probably, you probably see that. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, there's, there's more to radio than just music today. I think it's a question of entertainment now. And uh, in some ways, being a little more creative. <laughs> Seriously. It, I, 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 I think there's just a little bit more than just sort of playing one record, that was, this is, and playing the next, you know. There's just a man a minute, just a minute. Everybody's head wants to talk to you. <laughs> just to come pick a minute there. See, the implication being, of course, that 20 years ago there was no entertainment on the radio, it was just music. <laughs> Yeah, but we haven't got auto cue today. <laughs> That's true, nor, nor indeed idiot boards. And from listening to the three of you talk, you were missing them, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for the insight, Mike, and, and you too, Bruno and, and, and Janice. And uh, I've got I've got John and, and Tony with me, who you've probably seen. 
And we're, we're honored <laughs> and delighted to be part of this whole Radio 1 extravaganza, aren't we? And, and how good to have a pregnant disc jockey on the show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My compliments to you, John, and perhaps you'll lose weight later on. But, <laughs> but any, any, any message for, for John or Tony before we leave you, chaps and lady? No, not at all. It's, yes. it's, it's, oh, you've got a Janet has a we've message. Because of all of these television people here, we've run out of milk, so can you bring some in, John? I will do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd turn out to be good for something one of these days. Yeah. Thank you all, all three of you. Thanks a lot, Mike and Bruno and Janice. Tom. Thank you. Nice Bye. To All of that electronic miracle, you wouldn't have been able to do that. This is true. 20 years ago. Isn't it yeah. tremendously exciting? And, oh, it is. And they only put a man on yeah. the moon 20 years ago as well. It's terrific. I mean, those studios are beautiful studios now. And, uh, but uh, what they say on the main thing is the music, and the music's still good, isn't it? it the music's is, terrific. Yeah. And, uh, well, some of it. Yeah? Some of it. But some, it, of it. some of it was all. I mean, you can't love it all. No, well, I mean, uh, it would be silly to say, I, I never say to my son that, uh, you know, they don't write songs like they used to. I mean, my dad used to say that to me, and that's just a ri most ridiculous thing to say that, yeah. isn't it? But I think the music today is wonderful, and uh, as you say, the new electronic techniques with satellite and everything now, it's a really exciting time to be in broadcasting. Do you think it's moving forward, though? I mean, um, technologically it's better, but is it, is it moving forward? Or were, you, were you disappointed after the, that blip of excitement with punk? It kind of settled down again. Well, yeah, there was that, but I mean, it's still there's still a lot of exciting stuff around. You have to look further afield for it. I say I'm, I'm not a, I'm not impressed by technology, unfortunately, unlike uh, Tony here, because I don't understand it. I'm a, I, I, tech, technology leaves me after the toothbrush, you know. I mean, so, and, so I just have two turntables and a microphone, and any time I try to involve more machinery than that, I usually get it wrong. So I'm not really that fascinated by the technology. And compact discs and things, I had a compact disc player for two years mm. before I eventually found out how to plumb it into a system. <laughs> and I never use it, you know, so it's... Uh, I mean, I, I just like doing just like me, a microphone, and two turntables. Sounds very romantic. But radio but is better it is. now than it, than, it, than it was 20 years ago, because it's faster, it's uh, more precise, and the whole thing is better. And of course, with Radio 1, if you remember, we used to have to share the wavelengths with Radio 2 in the afternoon. I so. used to welcome that, yes, because I was the one who shared it. I know. I so know. now, <laughs> I must love you and leave you, but in the meantime, thank you, Tony and John, for joining Thank you very much. Four faces from that photograph for you in a moment or two. Now for some music and real Radio 1 playlist stuff. When this group were last on Wogan, they, they created a sensation, so it's a pleasure to welcome them back as their latest single climbs the charts with I Don't Want to Be a Hero. It's Johnny H. John! current holders of the, of the Engelbert Humperdinck Award for the weirdest pop man. They say old DJs never die, they just fade before the Greenwich time signal. Well, my last four guests tonight, they haven't faded yet, they're still good for a quick time check, a weather check, top 20 rundown, dedication for Tracy, I still play the next waxing without walking through the lyric. Looking on a day older, elderly ravers all of us, aren't no, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Possibly not a day older, several years. Welcome, Pete Murray, Ed Stewart, Dave Cash, David Simons. <laughs> Thank you, we're still, we're still being carried on Radio 1. Oh, isn't, that, I don't isn't that an honour? Really? Here we are on Radio 1. I broadcast on Radio when, did you, when was it last? But you were in that picture. I was in that there picture, you were. but I didn't last very long on Radio 1. They put me on Radio 2 immediately, virtually. They did the same with me about yeah. two years later. Yeah. 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 And you? What yeah. are you doing, my boy? Well, I'm down a little station down in Crawley called Radio Mercury these days, but looking back those 20 years, I was the second DJ to, to be fired. I remember. The first one. Now, here's a Trivial Pursuit quiz for you. Who was the first disc jockey to lose his job on Radio 1? You guys oh. remember? Huh? Oh. No, he wasn't. No? Duncan, drunk, Drunken Duncan Johnson. Oh, Duncan. <laughs> he's right. the clue. <laughs> well, that's all right for a bit of litigation, I yeah. <laughs> No, it was great memories. Yeah, they used, to, they used to give him the elbow for... I mean, it's probably a more secure job now than it was, wasn't it? Who said? <laughs> well, I mean, Dave, I... You used to work in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, you took over from me. I got fired, you took over. Yeah. <laughs> I always feel that you must have said something 
Because I it did. couldn't have been anything I did. I you went, must have said something. I did. I went, the Bernard Herrmann and the NDO. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you, David, you were, of that picture, the mm. picture we looked at earlier, you were the BBC's man. The others had come from forts and boats. And you were the BBC <laughs> man. <laughs> you were the BBC <laughs> man. But since, I mean, I've watched your career. You've been on one, then mm. you were on two for a while, mm. then you went to America. Now you're back on Radio 4 reading the news. Well, that's right. And uh, if you go back to the picture, you notice that rather smart white suit that I was yeah. wearing. <laughs> hasn't, it, hasn't it lasted well? <laughs> <laughs> Pete, you did, you did open house, obviously, for, for many a long year. And now you're working for London, LBC. LBC, that's right, yes. Yeah. LBC Radio is it now, then, of course. Yeah. yeah. Doing sort of... Um, well, I do it. Settling yeah. people's sexual problems. Yes, I'm very people. good on it. <laughs> <laughs> Man of great experience. Yes, I, I'm, I'm very good on the sexual experiences. The only trouble is I haven't got any of my own. <laughs> <laughs> of which to draw. Uh, that's right. Do you remember you were called Stew Pot? Stew Pot. Yeah. yeah. Who, who called you? It was, it was Dave. No, well, actually, the memories of coming here to your studio is that here we used to do Cracker Jack, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> I'll remember. I haven't got my pen yet. <laughs> yeah, oh, have you? Oh. Well, did you? You called him Stu Pot, didn't That's you? That's right, on the ships. We, we were on the ships one time. Ed Stewart didn't kind of, you know, Ed Stewart. We had Kenny Everett, but Ed Stewart. We needed a name for him. Yeah. And then he did his bit with the stomach and I said, That's it, Stu Pot. <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose now that you're a serious man of the world and you're working for. Who are you working well, for? Well, you wouldn't dare do You've it. You've asked no. me three times. I'll tell you again, Radio Mercury. I'm glad I, I mentioned that. I love that. that. I might get a rise for that. Yes. But yeah. yeah. But uh, you can't be persuaded, I suppose. Well, only if you will with me. No, no. Oh, I come can't. on. Shall we get Terry to show us how to do the stupid? I can't do the stupid. Yes, you can. Look, look. Well, well, no, no, let's see. You. Let's see. Go on. Let's see how to do it. You take your shirt off my head. I don't really think that goes with the suit. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I've just put my mind, it goes very it well go, with the suit. It doesn't go with good taste either. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. you asked me, what do you yeah. expect? Absolutely revolting, I can just say. <laughs> do, you, do you regret leaving the BBC? Not one iota, no, I really don't. And I, 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 I don't say that with any bitterness, because I thoroughly enjoyed my work with the BBC. But the LBC is a whole different dimension. I mean, I don't play records anymore. I've had some... I, I reckon that that is the hardest job I've ever had in my life. It really is tough. Keeping people quiet of an early evening or late mm. evening. Late evening. Well, I'm in the afternoons now. They put me into the afternoons as from last week. I'm on between three and five. But uh, you know, we, we, I've covered everything from abortion to to politics, which is more or less the same thing, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you say you work for Radio Mercury. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Dave, yes. Are you, How much you getting paid for this, Roger? Who are you working for? Where are you Radio working for, Dave? I can show you. Oh, you go. You see? Right. You see? <laughs> Why haven't you got Radio 4 I tattooed do, I do, on your I do. chest? I cut you this off a piece of paper. You see, that's the difference, if today. I may say so, between the BBC and common commercial interests. You have a discreet little badge that's here. Right. Yeah. You're wearing Radio Mercury tattooed in your stomach, <laughs> and you've you got a t shirt with yeah. Invicta on it. Sure. No, but he's, look, he's wearing the tie that he reads the news in. Look. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Of course, in the old days, after 6 p.m., everybody was required right. to get into a tie like this. Mm. Yeah. By the way, Terry, I brought you a rose which I've hand picked from my garden. Oh, what a lovely thought. This, this, this is a peace rose. A peace a rose. Peace rose. From Thank my you. front garden. Lovely. Oh, very kind. Thank you. I shall wear it in my teeth almost continuously. Well, thank you so much. What teeth? Dave, do you have any bitterness about the BBC? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> What's he doing? He said, what <laughs> teeth? He's right. Just a minute, I'll put Just him in and out. ask you the question yeah. again. Yeah. I mean, you, what have you, you've gone right round various the, commercial yeah. routes, haven't you? Capital, mainly, 13 years there. Yeah. And then Radio West and then Invicta. I don't regret leaving the BBC. I love my time there. But uh, you, you, you got to move on. You only get a few years, you know. Yeah. Mm. You know, Mike Smith, your turn. <laughs> no, I, I, I disagree. Anyway. I think radio can go on forever because the voice doesn't age on. No, not on so. Radio 1, though. I think you've got to do your Radio 1 stint. How, how, how many years do more people... But you remember we were talking to John Peel earlier and saying, of all the people in that picture, you would have said, this is the guy who's not going to make it longer than <laughs> oh, about yeah. three minutes. I don't think so, actually, Terry, because when I first posed for that picture on the steps of All Souls, along with all the the other assembled gentlemen. I wasn't sure what to do. And I heard John saying on the show earlier that uh, he was sort of scared of the image consideration. Well, I was too. So I got a suit and I had a haircut and I was a clean shaven lad in those days. And the white tornado, as then was, came along and he said, uh, very nice, but 
Bit too straight, Dave. Bit too straight. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so you I'll, just can't win. It would be nice if we could reminisce more, but it it's nice that you can. Is that it? And we're part of the 20th. Are you telling me that's it? Yes, and I would like, as a tribute uh, to the fine work to that you've done, I'd like to present you with a dried flower. Well, how great. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you where I'm going to put it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's on that flower, you know. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm wondering what is going to... Anyway, that's it. Join me <laughs> on, on TV, I'm afraid. We won't be on Radio 1. Thanks to Radio 1. I'll have Lord Soper, Hailsham and Denning with me at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. Rabbit. A far cry from this class of thing. <laughs> Good night. The next Wogan on BBC Wales will be on Friday at 7 o'clock, but on Wednesday night starting... Is she or isn't she?